Okay, should be going here in just a minute. As per usual, give me a second to make certain that we have uh, just everything right and ready to go, especially the audio, because that's where we're going to be continuing to see the problems for some reason. with Fa I don't know what it is with Facebook, but we just, for some reason it does not like any of my microphones. But uh, so far, again, it does not seem to be a, too much of a major problem. Looks like we... Okay, good. We're just... Go ahead and mute that because I don't want to hear myself talking to myself while I'm talking to myself while I'm talking to you, and I'm sure you don't want to hear that either. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. It is Friday night. Happy Ides of March, unless you happen to be named Julius Caesar. We continue to see some quieter conditions into the rest of the weekend. We do still have some chances of rain tonight and again on Sunday, but for right now, it really does not look to be uh, too much of a problem. Again, so far we're looking good into the rest of the weekend as well, with one minor exception. Uh, we see, again, the potential for more chances of showers as we get into uh, next, of course, Sunday. And again, toward late next week, we're going from winter to spring this week, astronomical winter to spring. So that starts, and it's going to feel a lot more like winter should. Very much on the cold side, very much on the uh, frosty side, again, if you got plants outside, time to bring them back in again or cover them up because we will be seeing more potential problems out there into the rest of the next uh, several days, toward about Monday into Tuesday. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Hope you've had a great week. It's been a busy weather week, and we continue to see uh, some fairly nice conditions overall. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. If you've never watched before, this is Weather Overtime, our online video weather blog, coming to you from WDEF News 12 in downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik, and we're on Facebook Live and Twitch TV. So if we have, uh, if you have any questions, please drop them into the chat function on uh, Twitch. And if you have any comments on Facebook, I'll pick them up as we go along unfortunately i've got to go back and forth between screens so i won't get your comment immediately but i will get it to you here coming up in just a little while let's go ahead and get started and uh thanks to everybody for some great pictures this last week and no less so for today i always just like to have a choice of pictures so that on a gray rainy stormy day like this we have a better view from some blue skies and sunshine and especially thanking News 12 viewer Joanne Stevens walking her dog Lily at Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park. And we saw the horses off in the distance. She had a chance to speak to the riders. Looks like it was a beautiful day out there. So thank you, Joanne Stevens, for our Langley Roofing weather window picture of the day. If you've got pictures, we'd love to see what you're seeing out there. So go ahead and send them in to us at pictures at WDEF.com or you can drop them to our Facebook or X or Instagram pages in the comments section. 70 degrees, our high temperature. We came within one degree of a record high yesterday. Today we were 16 degrees below that. 42 are normal, 61 the high temperature earlier on this morning. An inch and a quarter of rainfall in the last 24 hours, which gives us a decent, if not a fraction, of a surplus. So we do have at least a little bit of rain in the rain gauge out there. Heading out tomorrow, we do not see any problems for outdoor activities. Fishing, hiking, uh, going out for a boat ride looks good with temperatures back into the lower 70s. Uh, going out for a round of golf tomorrow, it does look excellent. Occasionally breezy winds of 10 miles per hour, but really just not seeing too much of that. The worst problem you're probably going to get is more tree pollen going on. I finally found my antihistamines back, so I'm not feeling as bad as I was a couple of nights ago. So very nice to be able to have that particular situation saved up. We do have, again, some quiet conditions out there. Uh, numbers, again, for right now, not doing too bad. Island Cove, we'll get back to that shot coming up here in just a little bit as we do our seven-day forecast. Downtown on the Bailey's Heating and Air Camera, looking off toward Lookout Mountain and still a little bit on the hazy side, but not doing too bad on the travel as I, uh, 27, Highway 27 traffic moving along. Lee Point looking off toward the Chattanooga Airport in the distance and Lookout Mountain. You can see pretty well out that way. Highway 153 traffic moving along very nicely. 
looking up at Lookout Mountain from the News 12 studios. And you can see some of the lights up there on the crest of the hill. Uh, we're just right across Broad Street, and that's the highway there that goes around the north flank of the mountain where you can get up to uh, Ruby Falls uh, if you're down this direction. But otherwise, a quiet night in downtown Chattanooga. Very quiet earlier at 2475. And last couple of hours, a good backup from 75 north to 24 west. Signal Mountain lights visible all the way off in the distance. So a beautiful night there. Chattanooga Theater Center on the North Shore. Lots of people out and about this afternoon and this evening at Coolidge Park and on the footbridge. A lot of people out there right now going across, coming and going. But we're not seeing anything in the way of... Uh, the number of people that we saw earlier in the day yesterday, we had several hundred people out there. looks like it was a good day for that. Lookout Mountain from the Chattanooga Zoo and looking back toward the uh, north and west, basically, on the Chattanooga Zoo, hug a bunny camera. And that is coming up in the course of the next couple of weeks. If you'd like to know more about the Hug a Bunny event, go to the Chattanooga Zoo website or their social media pages for more. Very mild. It's comfortable out there. Light westerly winds, decently dry, not seeing a problem at all at this point across much of the area. Uh, from downtown at the Tennessee Aquarium, we are seeing, uh, it's Friday night, so there's a lot of traffic out and about, a lot of folks on a beautiful evening out there. This view available from tnaqua.org at the Tennessee Aquarium, the buildings you see back here in the background. Uh, a lot of folks borrowing the parking lot for parking and walking around downtown, but the aquarium is closed at this point in time and will be until tomorrow morning. Beautiful view. You can catch this on their website, so neat opportunity to see a little bit more there. Not quite the best view all the way out west. Uh, they cleaned the camera off, so that's something. This is Interstate 70 heading up into the mountains west of Denver on our CBS sister station uh, back toward Denver. So we do get a decent view uh, there. We're taking a look around uh, areas that got just absolutely slammed by a decent amount of snowfall. And in some cases, it's still coming down out there. This was the view clearing out nicely. We have Lookout Mountain. They have Lookout Mountain. Theirs is considerably taller than ours, I think. Uh, looking out toward the Denver metro area and I believe out toward uh, DIA. Uh, some very nice views out that direction. So getting out of that storm system that rolled through gave them some winter and gave severe weather to parts of Ohio and Indiana. Beautiful view across the Potomac River on the National Park Service National Mall webcam. And again, considering this continue, con ah, excuse me, it's Friday. Can you tell? Continuing to see some very nice conditions all the way around. Looking back toward our area, just past the 7524 junction, looking off to the northeast, Brainerd Road exit and Ottawa, Cleveland, out that direction, looking back uh, right across the area of Brainerd Road. So it looks like everything moving along pretty nicely. We do have a few spotty showers left over. The front came through earlier, so these showers are forming in the lee of that front as it makes its way down. So we've got a few speckles on either side of I-75, right along I-24, and then uh, down into portions of I-59 where we had a couple of tornado warnings earlier this morning, but didn't look like much on the radar. A minor signature, a decent signature, but we have not had any reports of any touchdowns, injuries, or casualties. So that's very good news from what we've been seeing there. Temperatures at the 10 o'clock hour time is 10.03 Eastern. We've got some beautiful numbers out there. Nice for a stroll, a little cooler back toward the east. Temperatures back in the mid to upper 50s. From the regional area, we've got, again, a little cooler conditions back to our north, but uh, otherwise not doing too bad for now. We also have a little bit more moisture sitting down to our south as what's left of that front makes its way over that direction. And then notice back to the north of us on the infrared and the visible scan as that loop comes around, drier air coming on down, and that's going to be our forecast into the weekend but we will be seeing at least some nicer conditions out there that front has now basically cleared the news 12 viewing area northwestern georgia and back into northeastern alabama our next front is on the way it is over portions of the upper midwest this one 
is going to be giving us some cooler air uh, into the area as we go into the later portion of the weekend and into next week. Now combine that with a developing area of low pressure that's going to scoot to our south. That's going to provide some more chances of rainfall coming on through. And that is where we see the possibility of some showers taking place. But beyond that, just really not much of anything. If you're just tuning in and joining us on Twitch uh, or on Facebook Live, thanks for joining us and keeping you updated on the weather. Again, I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik from downtown Chattanooga, keeping you, giving you an idea as to what's going on with what's happening with the weather. Currently, again, we are going to be seeing uh, not much of anything outside of just clouds into early Saturday. And then as we go into Saturday afternoon, looks like we'll clear out a little bit. And then our next front is on the way from well back up to the north. It'll be arriving right about dawn patrol Sunday morning, but it's a dry front. There's not much with it. Watch down here, though, as our next storm system tries to move back to the north and gives us the potential, really just not that much of any rainfall potential. We're seeing a few scattered showers Sunday afternoon. So I'm thinking maybe a raindrop, but if this cold air is dense enough, this will prevent the warm, moist air from coming back our direction. So I don't think we're going to be seeing too much of anything in the way of rain on Sunday, St. Patrick's Day. We will see a few clouds Monday morning, and then temperatures on the brisk side as we get into Monday. And early on Tuesday, this is going to be interesting because temperatures will probably hit the upper 20s to the lower 30s. Now you combine that with a pretty stiff northerly wind and it's a good possibility that we will be seeing uh, the pot, some areas of wind chills into the area. So it is again possible that it's going to be a very cold day coming up for some of the area. So we could see the possibility of some very low wind chills into the area by early Tuesday morning, so the kids at the bus stop are really going to have to bundle up out there. So for the next few hours, not doing too bad. For the next several days, again, that could be a bit of a different story. So going into the next few days, seven-day forecast. Tomorrow, very mild, temperatures lower 70s, mid-60s as we get into Sunday. And then we see, again, a uh, chance of showers on Sunday, but really just not that much going on here. Starting to get on the windy side for Monday, and our temperatures really start to drop. Lower 50s for highs after lows in the 30s on Monday. And then getting kind of blustery for Monday night into Tuesday. Clearing out dry, no rain, no snow, no winter precipitation. But check out these numbers here. By early Tuesday morning, we could be seeing temperatures in the 20s. And with that wind out there, we could be looking at the potential of maybe some very low wind chills. So early Tuesday morning, I would be watching that, especially for the kids going out and waiting at the bus stop. Last day of winter is Tuesday, appropriately with those colder temperatures in here. First day of spring, we start to bounce back to just about normal for this time of the year as we go into Wednesday. And then Thursday and Friday, showers, maybe a rumble of thunder, but that's still quite a ways off. And temperatures remain quite mild toward week's end. So the first uh, portion of the first portion of the week of spring is not really looking too bad. It really is Friday. I am wiped out after all this, so pardon my uh, decent bit of blathering here for tonight. Not seeing anything in the way of severe weather coming up, but at this time of the year, we do need to be prepared for that. Now, before we go too far, we'd like to remind everybody in this area that you have a couple of opportunities to become a Skywarn spotter. Next week, Thursday, is basically the next time that you have available if you live in Gordon County, Georgia. That is about, uh, give or take, about 45 minutes south, of, south and east of Hamilton County in Chattanooga. The National Weather Service in Peachtree City, Georgia, which covers Atlanta, they're going to be holding a Skywarn Spotter training group Thursday, March 21st, 930 to 1130 in the morning. Uh, that's going to be in Calhoun, Georgia. So if you have the opportunity to stop by, take the course, get certified, great opportunity to learn more about what's going on with severe weather and how you can call in your information to the National Weather Service. They'll give you a direct line where you won't have to worry about 
uh, going through a switchboard or anything. And then you can also send information in by email and by their website. But they'll teach you more about what to look for and what to report at these meetings so you can give them information about what's happening where you are. You can give them your address so if a storm is passing close to you, they can call you and find out what may be happening. Uh, ground truth, as it's called. The radar does a great job sweeping out there and passing through the storms to get an idea of what's going on at the lower to the highest level of the storm and slicing in between there we can see where there's a possible tornado but we can't use radar to look down to the ground mainly because of the fact that radar goes out in a straight line and the farther you go off to wherever you're pointing the radar the farther the ground beneath you goes downwards and so the radar beam actually goes upwards into the atmosphere away from the radar site so that is where we see again the potential for the necessary uh, volunteers underneath the storms that pass on through so we can tell what's happening this is not a chase course and i know people out there who are going to be thinking uh, wisely acerbic and saying well duh it's a spotter's course well some people go to these things thinking they're going to be tra trained in chasing storms. This is not that type of a course. This is where you start if you want to become a chaser in the future, knowing the basics about what happens in severe weather. This is where you want to do your first groundwork, your first uh, finding out about things. And this is a good opportunity to do so. So Gordon County, this Thursday at 930 in Calhoun, Georgia. Now that same day, in Marion County, Tennessee, due west of Chattanooga and Hamilton County, there will be another meeting taught by a different National Weather Service office that covers that particular county. Uh, this is where we get our information from when it comes to severe weather, and that'll be held the same day, 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time at the Lawson Building, 300 Ridley Drive in Jasper, Tennessee. Uh, the National Weather Service in Morristown, which teaches these courses, they are asking, Peachtree City does not ask for this, but they ask for it at Morristown for you to uh, register on their website. It's a Google Meetings type site that you go to uh, to check in, and you have to register. It is free. The whole thing, all of these meetings are free. Your tax dollars, my tax dollars help pay for these things. And all you have to do is just register for a seat to tell them you're coming in case if they have a room for 100 people and they need a room for 200 people, then they can know to schedule another meeting, to split the meeting uh, into two sessions or two different rooms just to get everybody accommodated. So please sign up for the meeting at weather.gov slash MRX. Great opportunity to learn more. And again, if you are not able to attend any of these meetings, uh, there's a place, the University Corporation for Atmospheric Research, UCAR, offers a Skywarn training site through their Comet MetEd or Meteorological Education website. Uh, some great CEUs to take on here for science purposes if you'd like to check that out. You can register, again, for free, meted.ucar.edu, and you can take the Skywarn course whenever you want to at home at whatever time midnight noon whenever and then you can pass the course get the certification you can then get in contact with your national weather service offices and tell them that you're a skywarn spotter they can add you to the roles so they know that you could be calling or getting to them so please uh, sign up today that's one of the best things that you can possibly do on that so a good opportunity to learn more there about what's happening in your area and how to keep that particular area safe. All right, so for our uh, WDEF.com slash vote now website uh, sponsored by friendinroofing.com, uh, we started off with weather. We've kind of wandered into uh, science type stuff, but again, you can only ask so many weather questions without repeating everything and we don't want to do that so we are starting off with information about exometeorology weather on other planets we talk about the oceans and why we need to keep them clean and healthy uh, in that vein of the oceans the largest tidal ranges where the the most amount of water goes into the land and goes back out again 
uh, and creates some pretty awesome uh, flows of water, including some uh, maelstrom whirlpools in some places. So the Bay of Fundy, uh, one place up around Nova Scotia, Lake Pontchartrain down toward the Big Easy, the coastal area of South Korea in the Sea of Japan, or Challenger Deep, the deepest part of the ocean out into the South and Western Pacific, fairly close to the area around Guam. 48% of you said the Sea of Japan off Korea. 32% of you said the Bay of Fundy. And 10% of you said both Lake Pontchartrain or Challenger Deep. So if you voted for the Bay of Fundy, 32% of you got that right. 48% of you and 10% and 10%. So 68% of you did not get the right answer on that. Thanks for playing on our Friend and Roofing News 12 poll of the day. And definitely want to stick around as we'll have another poll coming up at midnight, which we will take throughout the rest of the weekend and keep you updated as to what is going on there. Again, for right now, it looks very much on the quiet side. I really don't see too much of any major problems out there. A shower or two through about the rest of the night, but that is really going to be uh, about it for this evening. So I think we've got some pretty good conditions out there. It might be a little chilly in the next few days, but that, again, should be about it and that i think should just about wrap it up it is a very quiet friday night hoping it stays that way we'll have a lot more on our websites coming up as we go into the weekend so follow along for more at wdef.com slash weather i think that ought to do it for now if i could keep my graphics straight that would really help out okay here we go so for tonight this is what we're looking for for the weekend and if you've got any questions, uh, email us. You can find details at our website. If you're on Twitch TV, blue bar at the bottom of your screen, aonic at wdef.com. That's my email address. You can reach anybody else here, Kay Blevins, Andrew Harrison, Rick Nyman, Brian Armstrong, through our website. So, again, go to wdef.com. You can also watch us live online. I'll be on with News 12 at 11 coming up here in just about 44 minutes so i've got to get this taken care of so i can hop offline and get things ready to go for the weekend and i think that should do it again for tonight meteorologist todd highslip has your forecast coming up online uh, and on air on saturday night and sunday night at 11 o'clock and i'll be back with you on monday afternoon and don't forget to check out chip chapman's forecast bright and early on Monday morning, starting at 5 a.m., and it could be a brisk one out there, so get set to get a little bit on the chilly side. Live and direct from downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee, USA, planet Earth, I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. Stay tuned for much more with News 12 tonight, online and on air, through the weekend and into next week. Have a happy and safe one, and remember, please, let's be careful out there.